Here are some need to know key commands and shortcuts in Logic that are gonna speed up and improve your workflow. The first one's a nice simple one. Just hitting escape on your keyboard opens up the tools options here. So you can quickly grab scissors, eraser, whatever you need. You can also open this menu by holding down control and right clicking. This next one is useful if you need to jump forwards or backwards to the start of a bar. You can just use the comma to go backwards or the full stop to go forwards. You press this a couple of times, you can move quickly backwards and forwards. This is great, say you're doing a take with someone, you hit record, they fumble the beginning and they say stop, and they go, let's go again. You can just quickly tap back, hit record, go again. This next one's great if you wanna copy and loop a region really quickly, click on the region, press Command R, tell it how many copies you wanna make. This shortcut's also super useful if you have a whole section that you wanna repeat. You can highlight all the tracks, make sure the ins and outs are nice and clean, press Command R and tell it how many times to loop it. Easy as. This next one's really useful if you need to bounce the track in place and commit some edits or effects. Say we want to commit all the effects that we have on this vocals channel strip. We click on the track, press Control B, and we get a list of options that come up. Now you can bypass effect plugins if you don't want to include that stuff. If you have that unchecked, it's going to include all of the plugins that you have on this channel strip. Include audio tail in file, include audio tail in region. This is just going to make sure if there's like a reverb, it captures the end tail of that. Include volume, pan, automation. It'll include all of that information too. And you just hit OK, bounces it in place. I use this all the time when I'm using things like Melodyne. Once I'm done tuning, I bounce it in place and I don't have to have the Melodyne plugin running anymore. Now, just quickly guys, if you're liking the content that I've been putting out, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button so I know that you're enjoying it and leave a comment below so that we can start some conversations about these key commands. This shortcut will save you so much time in edits. Say you have a snare drum like this and you wanna cut all these snare hits out. You could have your scissors as the second option tool here, press command and click at every transient. It's gonna take you a while. So what we need to do is make our first cut right on the transient. Then what we're gonna do is press command and hold option and then click at the start of the next transient. This is gonna make cuts the same length the whole way along that region. And then if you wanted to trim these, you could trim them all the same. Very useful. All right, this next one is some zooming shortcuts. So we hold down option and use our mouse wheel. We can zoom up and down and sideways. So we can easily zoom in and out on our session just with our mouse by holding option. You can also click on the playhead up the top, hold down option and drag if you just wanna zoom in. I find myself using this pretty often, just to zoom right on a point where I wanna be. Another zoom shortcut is to hold control and option and then click and drag what you wanna zoom in on. You can go very close. And then just hold control and option and click to zoom back out. You can also zoom in and out by pressing command and using the arrows up and down, left and right. That's very useful if you need to quickly fine tune your zoom. This next shortcut is super useful if you wanna open up a software instrument from the global window, hold down command and double click on the icon and then it opens up the virtual instrument right here. This next one's great if you have tracks that you wanna keep in your session but you're not gonna use them, but you're not ready to get rid of them completely. So for example, you don't want this electric guitar track anymore. You could mute it, right? and it's just sitting there in a session. And that might bother you. You don't want to see the muted track. You're not going to use it, but you just want it there as a just in case. Press H and it brings up an option over here on your track. Now, if you click that H and then press H again on your keyboard, it now hides the track. You press H again, you can see it. Very useful for keeping your session looking tidy, but you can still keep stuff in there as just in case. I use this all the time on vocals. Once I'm done tuning them with Melodyne, I bounce them in place and commit to the edits. I keep the raw vocal and I hide it just in case I need to come back to it. This next one's really useful. If you need to duplicate a track, just click on the track you want to do it to, press Command D and it's going to make a second track here and it's going to copy all of the plugins that you have here. Now another great shortcut is you can just hold down Option, click and drag the track that you're on and drag it down to copy paste it. Option, click and drag if you need to quickly copy paste something, make a duplicate of it. This next one's useful for setting the cycle range to a region. Click on the region that you want to loop, press Command U, and it sets that cycle range to loop that region. You can do the same for markers. If you've set a marker for a chorus, you can click on that, press the same command, Command U, and it's going to loop it. 
This is super useful if you just want to quickly export your song. You can press Command A, highlights all your tracks, Command U, and it's going to go from the start to the finish of your track. And then you can just fine tune a little bit. You don't have to click and drag all the way over the song. And then if you wanted to quickly bounce your song, you could just press Command B. This next one's really useful if you need to sum a couple of tracks together. Let's say we had two mics on a guitar amp and we wanted to blend them and commit them. Set the level of the first mic, set the level of the second mic until we're happy. Then we select both of those regions and press Command J. We'll get the option of a mix down of audio regions. If it's just a mono sound, just choose mono. Or if it's a stereo sound, you can bounce it down in stereo. And it's gonna combine these two tracks then into one and it'll mix them at the level that you have them set. And say you did have two mics on a guitar amp and you wanted to commit that blend, make sure they're center pan first, set the levels, do the mix down in place, and then go back to panning them. This next one's useful if you want to consolidate some regions and get rid of all of your edits. For example, you have all of these fades on these tracks here and you just want to tidy this all up into one clean track. What we can do is just press J and we're going to get the option to do non-contiguous audio regions require the creation of a new audio file. Hit create and it's just going to flatten these out and commit all of the edits that we have on them. Creates a new audio file and looks nice and tidy now. You can also come up to edit, bounce and join, join per tracks. And the last one I'm going to show you is strip silence. So we can use this to clean up loops or vocal takes, anything that's got a bit of silence in between sections and it might have picked up some noise or anything like that that we want to remove. This is a quick way of removing those silent sections. So all we do is select the region that we want to edit, press Control X, and then this pops up. Now we can see these are the little blocks that it's chopping and everything in between is removed. And you can play with the threshold to fine tune this. That looks pretty good. These other options let you fine tune the start and the end. So we can see when we change this one, it changes the end. We can tidy that up and make sure we don't get any cuts on the breaths and then hit OK. And it's cleaned out that silence in between our takes. So there you go, some really awesome shortcuts and key commands that you guys should start using straight away. Make sure you write these down on a piece of paper, put them in front of you so that next time you're working in Logic, you can quickly glance at these and start using them and start making them habits because the quicker you start using key commands, the quicker you're going to get at working in Logic. Now I can't cover every key command in one video, but I'd love to know what some of your favorite key commands are and shortcuts. Just drop a comment down below, let us know what you're doing that I didn't mention in this video. As always guys, thanks heaps for watching and I'll see you in the next one.